I want you to go uh, in your Bibles, Acts chapter 27. And uh, we're really going to spend almost the entirety of our time right here uh, in Acts chapter 27. And uh, I believe that today is a, it's a prophetic message um, to our church, Church 1132, but to the Global Church, Capital C Church. And uh, I really believe these are very, uh, this, this is a very crucial time for us as a church and as, as the body of Christ. So Acts chapter 27, verse 14, it says this, Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called the coronavirus, no, it's, that's not it, called the Northeaster, but you could call it what you want, swept down from the island. The ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind, so we gave way to it and were driven along. The, the, the storm hit them with such force that they gave way to it and they were driven by it. Now, if you skip down a couple verses to verse 18, it says, We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope. Of being saved. After they'd gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Pause. I don't know if Paul should have said this, all right? Like, Paul seems a little bit, this is, this is a classic, I told you so. When they're in the middle of the storm, they're throwing cargo overboard, they have lost hope of being saved. And the first thing Paul says, All you counselors out there, this is not what you lead with. I told you not to come on this trip. So Paul kind of got his in there. Then you would have, if you would have listened, you would have spared yourself this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage. Because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must. Everybody say must. Come on, in your home, say must. 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 It's kind of a weird word when you say it out loud, like a must. Must. You must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. That made me think of Musk. You know, remember that old? Anybody remember Musk? Yeah, I think my grandma actually wore Musk. It's TMI. It's bad. Said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. I want to speak for a couple minutes from the subject stay with the ship. Stay with the ship. Now, if it was just really just us talking, I, I would call it ship happens. <laughs> That's not right. We're not doing that, all right? So just forget, forget I even said that. Stay with the ship. You know, fear is an interesting thing. and we, We've been calling this series uh, Fearona. All right, not Corona, Fearona. Fearona. This is Fearona part two. Fear is crazy because fear does a couple things to you. Fear immobilizes you. Fear uh, at times can incapacitate you. And I found this to be true is that fear makes us act irrationally. It makes us act irrationally. Years ago, some of you probably heard me tell this story before, but we ran a clothing bank at our church uh, in Washington State, a uh, city where I grew up. And, and so one day we had a delivery of um, some generous people in the city. I don't know what they wanted us to use these for, but they gave the jail, the, 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 the jail in the city, gave us their orange jail suits. And I don't know what you think when you see orange jail suits, but I thought this is an incredible opportunity. <laughs> so me and my friends, we got in the jail suits and we thought, man, this is funny. Like, let's just pretend like we're escaping jail. Not really thinking what could happen or would happen. So we, we jumped out. We went out in the street and cars were coming down. We're like dodging the cars. I was doing the barrel roll over the hood. 
that was how it was in my mind. It didn't really work out that way. It just ran across. But, 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 but man, we, we were having so much fun, and we went back, and we thought, man, that was, that was fun. That was an adrenaline rush. And, um, and we thought, you know, it's so good. Let's, let's just do it again. And so we ran out. We run through the parking lot, and people like, Arr! you know, like people on their phones calling. And um, I didn't think about who they were calling. I just thought it was funny that they were calling somebody. And, and, uh, and, and so we saw some of our friends pulling, pulling by in a car. And so we thought, oh, awesome, getaway car. So we jumped in the street and we flagged them down. We pulled open the door. They're like, what are you doing? I said, shut up. You know, we jump in. <laughs> and they took off. And, and, and everybody that was witnessing it, they saw two young men in orange prison suits flag down a car, <laughs> force their way into the car, and make their escape. I don't know if I mentioned this or not, I lived in a small town. <laughs> All right, so people, people are panicking. And, and before you know it, we have uh, police cars on our tail. And, and, and me and my buddy, we were raised differently. All right, so, so this is, we were raised different, different ways. And so we stopped the car and the girls are like, get out! We're like, get out! Like, look at us! We're in prison suits! So they take off and we're on foot. My buddy... Now, he, this fear made him irrational. So he ran. We're talking like six cop cars, cops running. They're on high alert. The, we heard later, only later, that, that it was going over the, over the radio that we have two escaped convicts running through the city. He ran. I froze. Some fear makes you irrational, and some fear makes you immobile. If you're studying the brain, they would call it fight or flight. And my buddy, he was raised a little differently than me. He's just like, ah! I'm like, dude, you're, you're, you're dead, man. Like, don't, don't do this. And I just curled up in a little ball on the sidewalk in the fetal position. And uh, saying, mom, no, sure. Uh, needless to say, it was embarrassing. My dad was a pastor, and then it was a, it was a difficult, difficult situation. But I learned something about fear. The same fear makes different people act differently. Fear is no respecter of persons, and it does not treat you the same way. What one fear makes me immobile might make you irrational. But I want you to know that the men on the ship in Acts chapter 27 were gripped with fear. They were hit by such a storm that some of them were acting irrationally. Some of them were immobile, but all of them were in a storm. I'm going to tell you right now, our world is in the midst of one of the greatest storms that we have seen literally in years. We are in one of the greatest fights. We're in the greatest time of uncertainty than we have seen in a really long time. It's in, 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 in the difference of this storm, I think, than other storms is the, the Bible says this was a sustained storm. You know what I found is a lot of people can take a storm or a bad day for a day. But when a day becomes a week, and a week becomes two weeks and three weeks, and when you begin to have uncertainty of when the storm will end, this is what the scripture says. It says they eventually gave up all hope of being saved. We've been serving lunches to our community all week, over 5,000 lunches. And you know, you know what I found people are feeling? They're feeling uncertainty, and some of them are losing hope because of the prolonged battering of the storm. It's a problem. I've got two boys, and, and, and there's a difference in their cries when something's really wrong. Now, they think they can trick me, which they have a couple times, but I'm learning. I've, I've learned that Genesis, my youngest, he, he can cry on demand. I mean, just tears and everything on demand. I'm like, oh, what, 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 is, what is wrong? Like, what is, what is going on? And if he gets his way, he can stop on demand. So I've learned to recognize that the real cry is the prolonged cry. Wow. That, that, that he, he can fake me out with, a, with a, just, a, just a little cry to get his way, but it's the prolonged cry when he won't stop. A couple Easter's ago, we were on the, the trampoline, which, you know, it's just trampoline is just like a death trap for kids, it seems like, or a broken bone trap. It's, it's not even use that. It, it, and, and so he's jumping, and sure enough, breaks his arm. And he runs in the house, and his arm's like, you know, dangling. He's three years old. And, and uh, I'm like, is this the real cry? Or is this? Because he's screaming. And I'm like, okay, does he, does he want his way? But the cry didn't stop. 
when the cry didn't stop, I knew we had an emergency. You know what? When a prolonged storm hits you for a prolonged time, that is the storm that will rob you and drain you of hope. Anybody can handle corona for a day. But when this crisis begins to prolong, it begins to be prolonged, it begins to drag on. And now we have no certainty of when it's going to end, how it's going to end. Is it going to get worse before it gets better? What is going to happen? Am I going to keep my job? Am I going to lose? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's the prolonged storms that wear you down to a place that you don't know. If you're going to be all right. You don't know if your job is going to be all right. We talked to many people this last week who've already lost their jobs. Wondering what they're going to do financially. Maybe you're watching right now and you're, you're, you're faced with uncertainty. You have a storm that you're facing. I, I want to give you a couple thoughts from the storm that I think are going to help you. I think there's a couple thoughts that are, that are hidden in this, this passage. Because in verse 22, it says, Paul says, I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Now I want you to see something. It says only the ship will be destroyed. Now we all, that preach is good. We're like, yeah, that's right, only the ship. Unless you're in the water. Like you're going to be all right, but the ship's going to, we're like, yeah, amen. Amen? If you don't got a ship and you're in the ocean, this is what he says. He says that the ship is going to be destroyed, but you're going to be, you're going to be all right. So this is, this is what I was thinking about this week. You have to be careful that you don't fall in love. You can write this down if you want. Don't fall in love with normal. Because normal is comfort. Normal is when everything's going all right. Do you know what normal does? Normal breeds inactivity. When things are normal, I just, I can be normal. When things are normal, I can be average. When things are normal, I can just keep going the way I've been going. Normal robs you. Of innovation it, it robs you of the ability to invent to be innovative to be able to think around so you know what this crisis has done this crisis has forced people to innovate in the, it, they say in the recession in 2008 that more millionaires were made during that recession than outside of it in the last 10 or 20 years because people found an opportunity in the midst of the crisis. The recession, or should I say the storm, pushed them out of what was normal. Listen, the ship, the boat, is a vehicle. It is not a destination. And if you two get too comfortable with normal when you're outside of normal, you're, you, you'll begin to think that you're lost. If you get too comfortable inside the way you've always done things, they say the seven words of a dying church are we've never done it that way before. This is what Paul is saying. He's saying, hey, the ship or the boat or the method or the normal that we're used to is going to be destroyed. But we're going to be okay. You know, we live in a different world today than we did a couple weeks ago. Our normal has been destroyed. Our normal has been rocked. Our normal has been destroyed by a storm. But I'm going to let you know this, that although our normal is destroyed, we are going to be saved. We are going to be saved. Don't fall in love what is, with what is taking you to your purpose because the vehicle isn't the purpose. It's just your transportation. Man, you got to be careful that you don't fall in love with a method or fall in love with a job or fall in love with a way or fall in love. You have to be careful who you fall in love with as people because crisis has a way of changing our normal, adjusting our normal. Do you know God uses circumstances and storms to pull the greatness out of you? I was talking well, with one of our video guys, and this, he, we had this short little conversation, and it rocked me. Because he said, you remember, Pastor Dustin, in the early church, it was the persecution of the church that scattered the church. It was what made the church go global. It was when they were pressed outside of comfort. It was when they were pressed outside of... I believe this is the greatest day 
that the church has seen in decades. I believe that hidden in the opposition is an opportunity for the church of Jesus Christ to be a lighthouse. I believe there's an opportunity for us to shine the light of Jesus. I believe there's an opportunity for us to get rid of the comfortable boats that we've been living in and cling to a Savior that can save us and bring us through. I believe souls will be saved. I believe bodies will be healed. I believe people that are far from God will be brought near to God because we understand that the ship isn't the Savior. You got to be careful that what you ride in doesn't become your comfort. Right now, people are facing all kinds of financial insecurity. Your job is not your boat. I'm telling you, God is your provider. If the boat crumbles, he remains. You got to be careful that you're not trusting in what's carrying you. God said, hey, I know you're in the ocean. Boat's going down, but you're going to be all right. Don't fall in love with normal. Listen to this. See the purpose beyond the problem. Verse 23 said, last night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must, I love this, you must stand trial before Caesar. Listen, he had a purpose on the other side of his journey. See, this is good news for each of us. If you have purpose on the other side of whatever, if you have purpose on the other side of COVID-19, you're good. If God still is doing something or hasn't done something that he's promised you, if he's given you a word about something, a promise about something that's on the other side of this, I can have faith in the midst of it. I can have faith in whatever storm that comes my way because I know that I still have something to do on the other side of it. So I can have faith. I can have perseverance. I can have even joy in the midst of the storm because I know that I'm coming out on the other side. Paul said, I know that I have to, I must stand before Caesar. He understood that there was, a, there was a purpose that was on the other side of the problem. So he was able to have courage. I'll tell you right now, in our world, we need courage. I see believers that are shaking in fear. I see believers that have their faith just completely rattled. And I want you to know is that we have to see that there is purpose beyond the current storm and beyond the current problem. You're not a has-been. You're a must-be. Paul wasn't a has-been. His greatest ministry wasn't behind him. His greatest ministry was still ahead of him. The books of the Bible still were yet to be written. He had purpose on the other side. You're not a has-been. If you're watching this, you're not a has-been. you got purpose on the other side of this. I think that, I think that when the storm... Honestly, I think when the storm hits us for so long, we actually think, we actually think that this might be the one. This might be the one that takes, oh man, this might be the one. I might never recover. You're going to recover. You're going to be all right. I know we're facing some real fear and some real danger and some real uncertainty, but we're going to be okay because there's purpose on the other side of the problem. Paul said this. He says, I have faith that it will happen just as God told me. So let me ask you this. What was the last thing God told you? What was the last word that he gave you? Was it that you weren't going to make it? That it? Was it that your days were numbered? Or was it that the best is still to come? Was it that the, your latter days will be greater than that of the former? That, 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 that God was still doing a new thing that has springed up right underneath you? Do you not perceive it? I'm telling you, if you have a word then you can have endurance if you have a word. You can have faith if you have a word. Then you can have courage if you have a word. You can have boldness. When the world is in fear, we can stand in faith because of the word. The, the, the Bible says the world will pass away, but his word will last forever. It will endure forever. Other thing I thought, and this is, this is just so true of storms. We're talking about storms. So you got to see the purpose on the other side of the problem. But, but you have to have the tenacity to outlast the storm. To outlast the storm. Do you ever think about how long storms last? I mean, just think about it. I mean, they're devastating. They, they cause damage. But they pass. Are we in, I mean, look at the weather. Are we in a storm right now? Maybe where you're watching this, you are. It passes. 
We had a storm a couple days ago. We had a storm a couple months ago. There's been some tornadoes around the last couple of years, but it's not, it's not happening now. So this tells me, this gives me a clue to survival is persistence. If I can outlast the storm, if I can survive longer than the storm survives, I can come out on the other side. Listen to this. If you scoot down the chapter to verse 27, we didn't read this yet. It says, on the 14th night, we were still being driven across the Adriatic Sea. When about midnight, the sailors sensed that they were approaching land. They took soundings and found that the water was 120 feet deep. A short time later, they took soundings again and found it was 90 feet deep. Fearing that we would be dashed against the rocks, just fear everywhere, fear in the water, fear in the shallow water, they dropped four anchors from the stern and they prayed for daylight. In an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let the lifeboat down into the sea, pretending they were going to lower some anchors from the boat. The bow. Then Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. Unless these men stay. Staying power. Staying power. So the soldiers cut the ropes that held the lifeboat and let it drift away. Man, you know what? I think there's too many believers that are praying for daylight, but they have their own lifeboat. They're, they're praying for the pass of the virus, but they got their own contingency plan over here. Paul said, the only way to get through the storm is to get through the storm. You can't escape what's coming. You can't get around what's coming. You can't try to avoid what's coming. You've got to get through it. So he says, you got to stay. It's staying power, people. It's staying power. It's being able to say, yes, it's difficult right now. Yes, there's some uncertainty right now. I'm feeling some timidity, some anxiety. I'm feeling some fears. I'm immobilized or I'm acting irrationally. But I understand that there is a power in staying. If I can stay with the ship, then I can endure the storm. If I can endure the, the storm. Your storm has an expiration date, but God's purpose doesn't. Now, that's good news for somebody. Your storm has an expiration date, but God's purpose doesn't. God's purpose is going to continue. It's going to continue to advance. It's going to continue to make moves. It's going to continue to make a difference and make an impact. The storm, this storm, has an expiration date. I don't know if you know this or not, but... In, his, in, in the last hundred years, there has been 14 recorded recessions. That they've actually wrote down in history that this is a recession. The, 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 the longest recession was the Great Depression. It lasted a little bit over three years. Lasted, now, there's a key word that I just used in that sentence. Lasted. You know what lasted means? It means it's over now. So our nation's economy has gone through 14 different, this, it's happened before, 14 different recessions. Not only that, there's been all kinds of epidemics and pandemics that have hit our nation in the past. And God has been faithful in each of those. So I'm confused as to why we think that this one is the one that's going to do us in. We need some staying power. We need some tenacity. We need some courage that in the midst of a storm, we say we will not be moved. We will not be shaken. We are staying with the boat. We're staying. We're staying strong. We're staying faithful. We're going to pray. We're going to give. We're going to serve. We are going to have some staying power. We will not bail on the promises of God. Isaiah 43 verse 2 says, when you pass through the waters, wait a second, when, when, when you, when you, there's no escape from it, there's no avoiding it, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, so there will be some fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. So we're going to pass. We're going to pass through it. The only way through the crisis right now is through it. Can't go backwards. You can't just hide in your home, although you should be in your home. You're going to have to go through it. You're going to have to go through it. 
You're going to have to put down your heels. You're going to have to solidify your faith. And you're going to say, I'm going to get through it. You're going to have to have some grit. You're going to have to have some work. You're going to have to have some hustle. You're going to have to have some innovation. And we are going to get through it. I'm telling you, God is going to use this current crisis to advance his kingdom. God is a master. He's a specialist at using what the enemy meant for evil and working it and turning it for our good. Psalm 23, most people know Psalm 23, verse 4, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. If you've been around very long, you know that I love this scripture because it doesn't say, Yea, though I walk through death. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the, the shadow of death. So it feels like death. It feels real. It, it feels like it's going to take me out. But, but it's a shadow. That if I can shine his light on the fear that's looming over my life, that fear leaves. If I can shine his light on the fear that's looming over my life, it leaves. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. You know, I see something that's super consistent in Isaiah. Now in Psalm, it says this, that his presence is more important than any other thing. Because he says, you're going to go through the water, but I'm going to be with you. Yeah. Psalm says, you're going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be with you. There's going to be uncertainty. There's going to be crisis. Jamie and I, we were talking last night, and we were reminded of a friend who had said, you know what, I think that we don't know how to suffer as Americans. We don't suffer well. We, we expect everything to work out. We expect everything to work out as planned. And then we, we we're, especially as believers, we just think everything's just going to be just wonderful and blessing and prosperity and we're never going to get hit by anything. The truth of the matter is we live in a fallen world. This isn't heaven. This is earth. And there is going to be opposition and there's going to be crisis. I mean, for real, for each of it, there is going to be real uncertainty that's going to hit us at times. And if you're trusting in the boat or the vehicle to get you to God's presence, I'm telling you, God's going to use what we're in to move us, but what we're in is not the Savior. You know what's interesting is that, that when God began to save them, they started, the, sh the ship started to break apart, the boat started to break apart. And they be the thing that they came in broke apart. They could never use it again. It was over. So God used something to move them from one place to the next, but he wanted them to get out of. So stay with what God puts you in as long as he puts you in it. But the first point was don't fall in love with what he puts you in. Because God's always changed. Church is different today than it was three weeks ago. The kingdom of God looks differently to us than it does. To, the world looks way different than it does three weeks ago. It's different, but it's not bad, and it's not wrong. And in the midst of it, you can see God if you take the time to look. That God is going to work, and God's going to be close, and God's going to be present, and God's going to heal, and God's going to encourage, and God's going to come alongside, and God is going to build His church. He's going to build His church. I was looking at my notes this morning, and I was just thinking about storms. I, was, I, I, I thought about this and, and I thought, what would I tell myself if I was like pep talking myself? What would I, what would I, if I'm just facing the storm of my life, I am immobilized or irrational by fear. What would I tell myself? And I just thought of three quick things. I just jotted them down. I jotted them down this morning. Don't die. That's what I tell myself. Survive it. Don't die in it. Don't die in it. I'm not just talking about your physical body. I know there's real fear of death. I'm talking spiritually. Don't die in it. Don't let your faith die. Don't let the promises of God die. Don't let the provision of God die. Don't let the power of God die in your life. Let it live. It's tenacity. People, I'm telling you, people that live through the Great Depression, they're just a different type of people. There's a different, man, you, you talk, you tell, you talk, ask people about their stories. From back in the day when people lived through that time, they came out different. They were strong because they refused to die in what they were in. They innovated. 
they move forward. They, they progress. I'm telling you, the people of God are going to progress. They're going to move forward. The kingdom of God is going to, you are going to progress. You're going to grow. People are worried about the economy and worried about their jobs. I'm going to tell you this. This is the time more than ever before to lean in. Not to your own comfort devices, but to the Lord. What can you do? What can you provide? Economy has always been shaped by people who are problem solvers. If you can solve a problem, you'll never have to worry about finances. Right now, some of you are out of work, some of you are at home. you got to lean in. What, what has God put in your heart to solve? Solve a problem. Don't die in it. I was thinking, what else would I tell myself if I was scared? I mean, really scared. Like, this is it. This could be the one. I would tell myself, don't run from it. Don't run from it. Don't run from you know that You know that feeling that it's like, okay, I've had enough. I'm, I'm out. I, I just, I don't know if I can face it. I don't know. Maybe you're facing something. Maybe, maybe it's COVID-19, but maybe it's something else. I don't know if I can face it. This would be my, this is what I would tell myself. Dustin, don't die in it. Don't run from it. Don't die in it. Don't you dare. Don't you dare run from it. Because there's no way to escape it. The only way is through. The, the only way you forgive is through. The only way you heal is through. The only way you overcome is through. Then I thought, man, what else? What else would I tell myself if I, if I didn't die, if I didn't run, I would tell myself, Dustin, don't get bitter because of it. Don't die in it. Don't run from it. And you better not get bitter because of it. Do you know what happens sometimes with survivors is when they get in the storm, the adrenaline pumps. So they survive the storm. But when they get on the other side of the storm, they recognize that they took on some damage in the midst of it and then their focus goes from the purpose to the person and they start seeing the scars and they start seeing the wounds and I think this could be true for any of us as we stop looking out we start looking in fear will take you over if you start looking in how will this affect me how will this hurt me how will they hurt me how will they, well, how will they talk about me what will happen oh, you start thinking about this but when you start looking at purpose when you start looking at the other side, God, you're bringing me through it for something. God, you're leading me through it for something. God, you're, lead, you're leading me through this because there's literally purpose on the other side of it. So Dustin, don't die in it. Don't run from it. Don't you dare. Don't you dare get bitter from it. If I could say something to all our church family, everybody's facing different things in different times, but I believe this with all my heart. This is a prophetic message. Stay with the ship. Don't you bail on your faith. Don't you dare bail on your family. Don't you dare bail on the promises that God's given you. Don't you dare bail on the word that God gave you. Don't you dare bail on all those things God spoke to you and all those things God promised you and all those things that were declared over you. I know it's stormy right now. I know it's hard to see it. I know it's hard to hear. In the midst of a storm, you lose your senses. You start acting irrationally, but I'm going to challenge you to go back to the last thing that God told you. Go back to the last word that he gave you, and I want you to get locked jaw on the promise of God. Grab onto it. Lock onto it. And don't let go. I'm telling you, have some tenacity that says I will get through it. And on the other side, we will not be bitter, but we will lift up praise. And we will lift up we will lift up worship to God and say he was the one. It wasn't our boat. It wasn't our techniques. It wasn't our know-how. It wasn't our intellect. It wasn't our technology. It was by the grace of God, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, right there in your home. Your days are not over. You're not a has-been. I declare over you that you are God's chosen child. You are God's chosen vessel. Your best days are still ahead of you. I may be blowing out your speakers, but I mean this from the bottom of my heart. We will not go down in this storm. God has a purpose on the other side. God has purpose on the other side of this problem. There's no way to escape it. We have to go through it. And we're going to go through it together. 
And we're going to go through it connected. And we're going to go through it as the church. Not just Church 1132, but the global church. We're going to go through it with our arms linked, our faith linked. And we're going to see the kingdom of God move forward. And the church of Jesus Christ be built. I don't know, like I said, where you're watching this. I'm speaking to a small group right here. To homes all over the world. But I want you to know this. We said this last week. If God got you into it, He's going to get you through it. He's going to get you through it. I, I feel this just in my heart. So many people you're watching, and there is some uncertainty that's hit your home in your life. The storm is raging, and maybe you're acting irrationally, or maybe fear has left you immobile. But I want you to know this that there is a purpose from God that's on the other side. Do you know what's interesting? The island that Paul was shipwrecked on was actually the island called Malta. It was an island called Malta that just happened to have a divine appointment there for Paul and an entire city, an entire island that needed the gospel. If he wouldn't have been shipwrecked there, they would have never heard. So God had a purpose even in the midst of the wreck. That the crisis, what everyone saw as a crisis, the ship is falling apart, but they saw it as a crisis. And God said, thank you for staying with the ship. Now we go share the gospel. Now will you share the message of hope? Now will you share the message of life? I'm telling you, our church is on a mission to share hope all around the world. There's a lot of fear. There is a lot of negativity. But we are on a mission to invade homes with the hope that only comes from the gospel. Thanks for listening to the Church 1132 broadcast. You can join us live every Sunday during our worship experience or at church1132.com.